Hey everyone, what's going on? We're seeing back with another fragrance video. Today I'm doing a review from the House of Zoologist, an independent company based in Toronto, Canada. And the fragrance I'm reviewing today is Beaver. So working off a sample. Uh, Beaver was released in 2014 and is classified as Oriental. The nose behind the scent is Chris Bartlett. Now, to give you a little bit of a background regarding Zoologist, uh, like I've said, this fragrance is based in Toronto, Canada, and it's uh, headed up by someone called Peter Wong. And uh, he started up the line in 2013, and to date, by 2016, they have uh, nine fragrances in their collection, which includes Beaver. Now, Beaver has two uh, formulations. The vintage one, which I'll be reviewing today, and in 2016, they released a reformulated version which was uh, released to appeal to more of a to a wider audience. It was a uh, it was reformulated to be more wearable. Now this is the first fragrance um, I've ever tested from this house, and the only fragrance I've tested to date. Uh, just want to put it out there as well that uh, this uh, the sample uh, was sent to me by Peter from the channel Fragrance View. I'm sure you guys know him. He's a fellow YouTube reviewer. So Peter, if you're watching, a massive thank you. Uh, Peter sent me a lot of uh, samples. I think it was at the end of last year. He sent me this. Uh, he sent me Slow Explosions by Imaginary Authors. Some samples by House Matriarch. A sample from Parfums de Mali. So Peter, just a massive thank you. A great guy, I'm sure you guys know him, and if you don't know him, then please do check out his channel and make sure to subscribe. So, also just want to put it out there that um, this sample was not sent to me by a zoologist, and I've not had any interactions with Peter Wang at all, uh, so this review is going to be totally unbiased. Uh, I know a lot of reviewers have been sent samples and bottles by Peter, uh, but I haven't, I've not had any interaction uh, so just keep that in mind. So let's uh, let's talk about the notes of this one. So at the top of Beaver, you're going to get linden blossom, fresh air, musk and light citruses. The heart of the fragrance is castorium, iris, vanilla, smoke and undergrowth. And the base of the fragrance is animalic musks, ash, cedar and amber. And this is an eau de parfum uh, concentration. So those were the notes of Beaver. But what do I really get on my skin? For me... Beaver opens up very, very airy and slightly powdery. And the opening for me smells like a mix of clean and dirtiness. And the mix of clean and dirtiness for me kind of reminds me of a public bathroom or a public toilet which has just recently been clean. Uh, it smells like there's cleanness in that toilet, but lurking in the background is the ever-present dirtiness which is just waiting to overcome that cleanness and the reasons for this are due to the animalic notes in the opening which give off a very dirty feel and the the notes of the light citruses which for me give off that vibe of clean cleaning product if that makes sense and it's the as the mix of these light citruses and that dirty nuance that you get for me it just reminds me of a public toilet which has just recently been clean now that does not <laughs> sound very appealing at all and it isn't appealing to me at all i find the opening to be very challenging uh, but I do admire the artistic quality of the scent. There is definitely some artistic uh, thought put into this fragrance. The opening of this fragrance is very challenging. It's very bold and it's very artistic, like I've said. And for me, I'm not entirely sure if it's completely wearable at this stage. Now, the animalic feel that you get from this scent isn't overly dark at all and it's not overly masculine as well don't feel like this is like your Shinaz Anteos or Koros uh, by YSL it's not like those type of animalic scents the animalic in this one is sort of a uh, sort of a light feeling and has a touch of elegance if that even makes sense when i've just compared it to a recently cleaned uh, bathroom but this fragrance does have a, a touch of elegance to it and it and it kind of shows in the uh, in the packaging as well so you have the the picture the image of the beaver there and it's and it's wearing a bow tie so it has a formal sort of feel to it uh, i just want to say the presentation of beaver is absolutely fantastic really really impressed by the presentation but yeah it does have a touch of elegance to it which is really strange 
so the opening is incredibly challenging. However, as the fragrance develops and into the dry down, the fragrance really loses that boldness and that challenging uh, notes and nuances that you get from the opening. And for me, the dry down, this fragrance has some light citrus is still present uh, with some clean sort of notes especially that linden blossom I feel it gives it that clean vibe and in the dry down I get this very lovely uh, slightly boozy vanilla the vanilla in the dry down is absolutely superb but in the dry down you get that light citruses the sort of powdery sort of feel and the vanilla which is lovely and very very sweet occasionally you still get whiffs off the opening you still got Get that whiffs of the animalic sort of opening that put recently clean public toilet sort of feel you still get that occasionally occasional whiffs here and there overall for me i found the the scent of beaver quite disappointing uh, i was really looking forward to wearing a very animalic scent which which was going to be animalic throughout a uh, really heavy animalic castorium musk scent but this one really didn't live up to that vibe and for me, the dry down, when that vanilla comes into play, the fragrance really loses its uh, its uniqueness and its boldness. Uh, for me, it just smells like any, I wouldn't say it smells like any fragrance out there, but that, that note of the vanilla in the dry down and, and the fact that the, uh, the really strong animalic notes are not present, it kind of really, really disappointed me, I must say, because even though the dry down is... Uh, so pleasing the vanilla is so so lovely it just the scent just did not live up to my expectation it was kind of a bit of a letdown a massive disappointment if i'm being completely honest in terms of uh, performance for me longevity was around eight hours uh, with projection being average for the first hour after which it starts sitting very very close to the skin after the hour mark this is pretty much a skin scent on my on my skin myself uh, in terms of uh, occasions and seasons, I think in terms of seasons, you could probably pull this off all year round for me personally, day or night. Uh, in terms of occasions, now it has a touch of elegance to it, so you probably would think to wear this formally. However, I think there's so many better fragrances to wear formally uh, myself. So I think this is best used for casual scenarios where you're going to be wearing this fragrance for yourself. And the reason why I say that is the compliment factor. Now I don't really go into many, uh, my reviews don't mainly go into much detail regarding compliments, but from my family and close friends, they did not like this fragrance on me at all. Uh, they thought it absolutely stinked. And I got some very, very negative uh, comments regarding this scent. Whenever I review a fragrance on my channel, I always, always, always test it at work. I wear it at least once. And uh, I've worn loads of daring fragrances at work uh, to test them for reviews, uh, such as Oud Isfahan. I've worn Black Afghano uh, from uh, Nasamato. Very daring, loud fragrances. And I've never hesitated to wear them at work because I felt confident wearing them and I felt uh, like they smell good and that I would get good compliments as well. However with Beaver I was really hesitant guys and I, I, I knew I had to wear it to wear it to give it a proper review and a proper test and to be honest I don't know why I was uh, I was so hesitant regarding wearing Beaver. The fragrance just didn't project massively at all so I don't think anyone would have smelt me to give me any bad reactions. So there, there you go. <laughs> In terms of projection, this is awful, and in terms of compliments, I didn't get many compl uh, many good compliments at all. I got some very strong uh, negative compliments, if that makes sense. For me, it was a it was this this fragrance was a, a massive disappointment, mainly due to the fact that how much hype this fragrance gets, and the fact uh, fact that it was a uh, it was marketed towards being this castorium musk heavy scent. I was like, wow, I just really really want to try a really animalic scent. And it was really dirty in the opening, but as the fragrance dried down, it, it just became a quite a generic vanilla scent to me on my skin with, with a touch of animalic nuance here and there that you can pick up whiffs for. But overall, it was massively disappointing. I find that this house on YouTube 
for some odd reason, you always find YouTube reviewing, reviewers saying, oh, before I start this review, I just want to say, if Peter, Peter Wong, if you're watching, I just want to say, you're the most amazing guy out there. Thank you so much for creating this fragrance. I just love what you're doing out there. Thank you, thank you. And then they carry on with their review. And I find that so strange. I've seen many reviewers, mainly from America, doing that and I just don't get it like if you're reviewing something by Christian Dior or if you're reviewing by something by Mont Blanc and you like that fragrance I don't see reviewers saying oh my god you're amazing to the creative director of those houses I don't even know who the creative director is of Mont Blanc I know who the creative director of is of this house because the other reviewers don't show up about him and I know what Peter Wong is friends with many people in the community and I just find it a bit odd like if you're reviewing something, you need to be totally unbiased. I just don't know why you would bring into your review saying a massive thank you to Peter Wong. What does that have to do with the review? But what the hell, let's get that out of the way. So, final rating for me, Beaver. I think I'm going to give it a, a 2.5 out of 5. Uh, for me, I was quite disappointed by the scent, but I do appreciate the artistic uh, thought that went into this fragrance. I really do appreciate that, but I just don't think, even though the artistic thought was put in, I just don't think it lives up to the hype that is being put out there on YouTube. Uh, I just don't think it's massively wearable on my skin. Uh, the performance drop, uh, uh, drops it a few levels for me as well. 2.5 out of 5 is a fair rating for me. I like to wear fragrances which make me feel confident, uh, make me feel sexy in certain situations. Uh, I like to be presentable, wear nice clothes. Uh, you know, I like to wear fragrances out of the shower, you know, when you're clean and fresh, put on a fragrance, just be really presentable, just smell really good, feel really confident. And this fragrance, it just did not make me feel like that. I felt really dirty wearing this scent and uh, it just didn't, it's just not for me, this fragrance at all. So a 2.5 out of 5. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know what you think in the comments below and until next time, see you later.